So it's Done. great to uh, great to connect with you, and I'm glad uh, I'm glad we have the chance to highlight your your business and your service. And um, very much looking forward to hearing about Space I Share's service model and um, and what the value proposition is and what the unique attributes of your of your service are towards your users and clients. And uh, you know, with that with that said, I'm I'm thrilled to hear all about it. Great. Well, thanks for having me on today. I'm super excited to be here. Um, so Space I Share is a marketplace for storage and parking. We help those that have space find people who need space. So the, the whole idea actually started a few years back now when I had an aunt who moved all of her belongings from her place in Toronto into storage. She was going to be going to Edmonton for two years and she needed a place to store it. And what I realized is that she was going to be spending a total of $12,000 over two years. And I thought, well, that's ridiculous. Um, I looked at my empty basement and I thought, there are so many families out there that would benefit from making $6,000 for those two years just to take someone's belongings who may not be visiting at all and putting them in their basement. And, and that to me was like, you know, a Disney trip or a mortgage payment or whatever people want to use the money for. And so I had been working in startup in the past and it, it just made me realize that there was nothing out there that was helping linking neighbor with neighbor. And uh, so not too long after we launched Space I Share and found that um, people not only were looking for storage, but parking as well. It could be long-term parking for their vehicle, for vehicle storage, but it also could be short-term parking where people needed it on a monthly basis. And so we, we became a full start, uh, storage and parking solution. And uh, you know, at some point we'll be looking at other verticals, but those are the two that we are really focusing on. Mainly, um, I would say in the greater Toronto area for now, but we have spaces across the country and even into the US and, uh, and intend on and you know, increasing that over the next um, six to 12 months for sure. So for things like parking, where do you find the, the biggest needs nowadays in terms of, um, so do you find that there, there's a large change or fluctuation between urban areas and suburban areas and, and and further to that you know has has something like covid over the last 12 or 13 months shifted where some of the different um, user needs happen to be and, and where some of the best um, value add happens to be in this this marketplace right well one of the things that we thought for sure is that we would see a lot of downtown parking spaces be um, be uh, mostly wanted, and that was certainly the case. The more density you have in the inner cities, the, the more people want parking. Uh, when the pandemic did have its start, start of the lockdown, we did see a number of people that no longer needed parking. And of course, we were fine with saying, okay, no problem. Um, you know, they would, no, there's no point in paying for something you're not using. And so we were very much in support of ensuring that the hosts were okay with it, but also letting people know no problem, you're not using that parking anymore, you can cancel. And so we saw a number of people leave their parking spaces for that time. Um, we've since picked up a lot more parking in the downtown core, which has been really great for us. But as well, we also find that, you know, in September to through to January, we got a lot of people looking for vehicle storage. And that was even just boats, cars, RVs. Yeah. People are looking for places to put their vehicles of any size tractor trailers, school buses, you name it. So what I what I say to people is that it doesn't matter if you have a suburban driveway that might be empty, or you have a parking lot, or you have a field, there's always somebody who's probably going to use that space for something. And what we want to make sure is that if you have space, put it on our platform so we can, they can be, you can be found, you can make money from it. So, you know, there's a lot of homes that you'll see my family lives in Mississauga and Brampton. Um, they're a, a you know multiple family household or multi yeah dual family household. So they have like six cars or lots of four cars, let's say minimum. So they're not always going to have a place to put them. And and of course, there's other people in the neighborhood that may not have that luxury as well. So there's always somebody in the neighborhood that may also need your your suburban um, parking space. So it doesn't matter where you are. Um, I would say post it if it's an extra piece of cart concrete, then post it. Um, and of course, garages are always, you know, needed, especially if somebody's storing it for a longer term and they don't need access to it. So, mm -hmm. kind of get get it out of the elements. But uh, yeah, there's certainly been a shift since the, the pandemic hit. Um, but we are slowly starting to see things come back, and 
I think everyone's just kind of rolling with the punches right now as things yeah. go up and down. But uh, but we, we think we're pretty poised to have a lot more spaces come on as well because people are starting to look for different ways to make money. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to that point, you know, with with how challenging financially the, the housing market is becoming and how expensive and, and how much higher cost of living is getting, especially in urban areas, I imagine there's no shortage of, um, of households and, uh, and individuals or, or businesses or, or property owners that are looking to monetize some of the excess space that they have and, um, you know, and make ends meet or, or, or at the very least um, get some money back for, for some area that they have that uh, they're not currently using. So it's a great value proposition. And uh, I imagine, you know, the more complex things like our housing market become, the more yeah. it's going to be for for a service like yours and that's right um, and how um so let's say if i myself as a as a homeowner have some additional space that let's say um, a closet or a part of our home that we wish to you know allocate towards storage or are willing to offer onto the market or a shed or a garage or something of that nature how does the process look as far as reaching out to space i share um you know disclosing the space that we have getting it mm -hmm whether it's inspected or looked at by by your by your service and then signed up and in a contract structured for that to be um, set up. And are there any um, things I should know about, let's say as a homeowner in terms of, um, you know, insurance or average contract length that I can likely expect from someone in need of storage? Um, and just walk me through that process a little sure. bit. Sure, I'd be happy to. We make it as easy as possible. So whether or not you need to call us and ask us some questions, we always have somebody or almost always have somebody who answers the phone and can help. Um, but typically the process would be that you go onto the platform, you hit um, post your space, and then you go through the process of where the, the, the address of it, the location, is it a basement, is it a garage or shed, like you mentioned. And then um, I think price is usually one of the biggest questions that people ask us, like how much do I charge? So we had a calculator built in that would say, um, give you an estimate of what you would charge. And so that calculator, we usually say in general, it's a dollar a square foot a month. So if you have a hundred square feet, you could charge about a hundred dollars. Um, if it's 24 seven access, you can add more onto that. Um, if it's, um, you know, you can only visit it once a, a year, then maybe a little bit less. We, yeah. we, we ask people to play around with the pricing because I think everyone's got a certain threshold that they would like to pay, but a yeah. dollar a square foot a month is probably more than half the cost of what self storage will be. Self storage will go anywhere from, I'd say, unless it's a large space from um, three to six dollars a square mm -hmm. foot so when we deal with some of our commercial property owners we'll go a little bit higher because you're again dealing with a commercial space um, they do want to make a little bit more money but then you have a little bit less interaction with the, the host yes. as a homeowner um, you may have to let that person into the basement every time they come over there may be an arrangement that you have with them to say, text me anytime you want to come by, give me 24 hour notice, any of those requirements. Um, so, you know, it all just depends on the host. In terms of um, anything else, I think a lot of people are concerned about, well, how do I know what I'm, what I'm housing? How do I know what's in storage, what the belongings are? So um, as a host, when you come on the platform, we provide you with a guaranteed payments from um, any of the renters that may default on a payment which hasn't happened often but once in a while someone's credit card expires so we will always make that payment to the host okay. um, and then we also have a ten thousand uh, dollar guarantee so that if there's been any damage in your home or if there's been any damage to the renter both sides get ten thousand um, dollars provided that they they sign all the documentation and that's what is important are these lease agreements that we that we put in place so as a homeowner um, you probably have your, ho your own ho home insurance anyway, and you may or may not want to contact them. We, all, we, we encourage people to do so, but home insurance companies are still very unsure of how to deal with a commercial agreement between two people. So that's why we have this $10,000 arrangement. Um, but uh, essentially, we'll have lease agreements for people. Mm -hmm. So between the host, between the renter. As a host, you also get to decide how often you want the person to come and visit their belongings. Yes. I will say for sure that most people think that they will come and visit once a week. 
and you'll be lucky if you see them three times in the whole duration. Yeah. I think people think they're going to do it, but I had a um, I had a renter in my garage space, and she took up a quarter of my double garage. Um, we we set out like a almost like um, a carpet on the ground to say, okay, this is about a hundred square feet, so just pile it on here. She had a key to my my garage. She was able to come anytime she wanted. She just texted me to say she was on her way. Her stuff looked like my stuff. It was stuff I didn't know what to do with, and I wasn't going to go through hers, and she wasn't going to go through mine. I just It's just a trust that we had. Um, and But when it comes to what's in people's boxes, as a host, you have every right to check. Mm -hmm. And so we have um, a document that we send out to hosts to say what to expect from your renter moving in. And if you feel like you want to open up a couple boxes just to verify that everything in there is okay, yeah. Go right ahead and do that. That is your right. It's your property and um, you're liable okay. if anything happens. And so um, we also ask the renters when they're signing the documentation, much like a self-storage facility, um, we'll say you are guaranteeing that you're not housing any live plants or food items or anything that's um, uh, dangerous or illegal or anything like that. So people do sign a document as well to say so. Mm -hmm. So it really does come down come down to trust, and I think I think once you have a chance to chat with the person who's you know storing at your place, you'll see that a lot of their stuff is just household goods. And again, I don't think people are really that interested in other people's storage stuff unless there's I don't think and and I, and as I always say, like if if you've watched Breaking Bad, um, those guys <laughs> have a lot of they have a lot of money. Yeah. And if you were doing something illegal, chances are you would want to pay the extra money at the self storage yes. facility to keep it there instead of putting it in Mrs. Parker's garage. Right. Yeah. So um, so chances are the people that are just like you have extra stuff, need to store it. And maybe their parents home isn't an option because their parents are going to throw it out. So yeah. <laughs> are, are there any things that right now that Space I Share is is doing or, um, you know, or uh, or endeavoring into with people like let's say residential realtors or people on the commercial side that that have access to vacancies um that you know that, that that sometimes need some creativity to be filled through something like this I, i'm i'm glad you asked and yet i can't answer that yet because the answer is yes there is and uh we're keeping it under wraps at the moment we already have everything built on this planet in my opinion that we need yes. and we have enough and it's all about just uncovering and unlocking all those spaces so that we can all make the most of it make the most out of the money and the investments we've made and uh and and keep the amount of green space that we yeah. have i i agree and, and that reminds me of one of the infographics i saw a couple of years ago stating that uh you could technically fit the whole global population into the state of texas and have enough space where people can live in four in four person households with a small backyard. And I think that wow. the more we can use our space efficiently and, and, and economically mm -hmm. in a way that's sustainable, the, the, the better we're all going to be. And, and, and it's interesting in that with the way society is changing right now with the different relationships that people begin to have with their automobiles through things like ride sharing, yeah. there may be a lot of garages, a lot of commercial parking lots underground parking lots even with with climate control that need to be repurposed over time that no longer need to be allocated towards individual cars right. people are driving in and out if they're now relying on a ride sharing um carpool and provided that it's safe you know within yes. a COVID context if i'm a renter in a location do the same structures apply from space i share granted the property owner would need to potentially provide um, consent for this to happen but is there is the pathway or is the process of getting signed up on space I share relatively similar yeah I would say so I'd say the only thing that the only challenge for a renter is you've got to find that space you got to find that perfect space so um, again a customer service actually spends the majority of their time I would say helping them find space um, so a lot of times people go onto the platform they'll do a search um, you know, reach out to a few hosts uh, to see which one works best for them. But from that standpoint, it becomes fairly simple. Um, as uh, like aside from, so what they do is they'll book, they'll book the space between the time period that they want. So let's say May first to May first, twenty twenty two, and then they'll be asked for their credit card, which they'll be charged on a monthly basis. And um, we also then will 
take on the the lease agreement with them. So okay. we'll 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 get them to sign the lease. Uh, right now it's in paper form. We are planning yeah. on putting in digital form, but it's almost better in a way to have it on paper because we'd want people to take this seriously and not be like, oh, T's and C's, yeah, dot dot dot, like click, click, click. It's like, no, you need to read the lease and make sure that you need to be respectful for the host and the host will yes. be respectful of your property. This is a, a sharing opportunity where, you know, you both need to understand that you're you're entering into a relationship of some kind, yes. right? So, um, you know, and what we try, what we are starting to talk to more commercial property owners about, including multifamily, is that you know, these are people that are living in the neighborhood that need these extra spaces. We're not w one night stands like Airbnb. So it doesn't matter if you're paying, say, 200 for parking or 2000 for an apartment. We should treat everybody the same in terms of signing leases and making sure everybody is safe and secure. Um, there'll often be some driver license um, exchanges between the two, print, uh, the host and the renter, just so that they have their information on hand. Um, always an emergency contact in case anything is is required for that, and um, then they just they move their stuff in, and it's it's pretty pretty simple in that sense. Um, we are taking on more commercial spaces for sure, and um, are excited to announce that we're going to be bringing on board a downtown location right by the CN Tower. Very nice. So that's going to be good because there's so many condos in that area; they have to schlep their stuff like pretty. Not necessarily far, but you definitely need a, a, a vehicle every time you want to go visit your belongings. But if this is just walking distance to your storage, then that would be so much better for so many people. So these are spaces that would never have been available to them before because, you know, the only option was self-storage. So now we can help big property management companies make money from their space. And then there's also people who have condos and don't use their storage locker. They can yeah. make a hundred bucks a month and that'll help as well. Yeah, storage lockers are a big, a big topic. I imagine they're yeah. they're often in uh, in short supply. If someone's looking for one, mm -hmm. but not all storage lockers are utilized fully. So I think that's, this could really yeah. this bridge could really that fit into a into a gap that that's been that's needed to be addressed for a that's long right. time. What what advice would you have for someone if they are to be a contestant on Dragons Den? So I think the number one thing when you go in is know that this is a great PR moment. Yes. And it's free advertising. Whatever you have as a brand, make sure it's it's in a it's in a phase that you're on an upward swing so you can talk about we've had challenges but now we're moving in this positive direction and here's why. Um, I mean every business owner is going to have like things happen along the way. So I don't think there's any any um, anything strange about that. Um, also try to be I think trying to be as entertaining as possible and tech is tech products are the most boring things you can pitch in many ways on a TV show like it's fine if you're in front of a bunch of investors that just want to know numbers but when it comes to television people at home need to be engaged and you need to get them to really buy into it and as you've seen from the years and years of people up there they've all figured out a way to get the dragons involved or to just yeah demonstrate in a cute way how their product is really effective or maybe not cute but like you know shock and awe people yeah. so I would say um, have a really great um, a really great way to in engage the consumers because you're not just speaking to these investors but you have to also have a, a mind of when you're speaking you're speaking to the consumers at the end of the day yes um, I think People probably would be surprised to know that uh, most of those deals don't actually go through. After the lights go out, you walk away, you don't necessarily have the dragon even contact you after. Um, you know, you, you kind of expect it, but as it turns out, they're so busy with their own own things that you almost have to chase them down and it becomes just a, an investor that you need to woo yes. again, but off camera. Um, so I did have a chance to meet with Michelle a couple of times. We've, we've engaged um, and talked further. She gave me some great ideas and pointers that I did listen to and, and, and get those done. Um, but then we just kind of went off in a different direction and then I never necessarily reached back out to her. So um, there have been some great companies that have come out, have been funded, have gone on to do great things. And I can think of a couple that I've, I've known. Um, but yeah, I'd say go there with just the intent of getting free advertising and have fun and uh and try not to take it too seriously because i don't know i think it's it's one of those things where they can make you look really good or really bad but it's a very intense moment to be yeah. in the camera on the spotlight and yeah and i've pitched to a lot of people a lot of times but that was quite intense yeah yeah i can imagine i can yeah. imagine 
a lot of pressure and, uh, and you're in front of a national or even global audience in some yeah. ways. It's a very exciting time in real estate where space is being viewed very differently. Well, thanks. I mean, it was great being on today and, uh, and I totally agree with you. I think people are looking at space in a different way and how to share space and how to turn it from an office into something else. And uh, yeah, and I, I hope, I, you know, I, I expect us to be at the forefront of that and uh, we would be willing to speak with anyone who has further questions about how we can help them monetize their space or if you just have a need to put some like storage or parking or anything else, let us know. Just uh, contact us at, um, I guess, info at spaceishare.com would be best. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure again. Mine too. Thank you so much. Great chatting with you today.